next talk that we have is by a bloke called Davey Shafik. Like traffic with a sh instead of a t, okay? And because I nearly called him David Shafik before and uh, I got that wrong. So uh, you're going to enlighten us to PHP under the hood? Yeah. Thank you. I'm not just a guy who stands here and heckles. Um, so yeah, uh, my name is Davy Shafik. Um, I hate Shafik, it's the usual American pronunciation. Wow, that's useless. Um, and it's the only one that annoys me. Back in there. There we go. Um, so I am a community engineer at Engine Yard. Uh, Engine Yard is a platform as a service. We take your PHP applications and we scale them in the cloud. I am the author of the Zen PHP 5 certification study guide. I have one here. I'm going to give it away to the most interesting question, if you want it. Um, interpreter to, to Zen Framework 1 and 2, PHP Docs, and I have one patch in internals, which means I can put it on this slide. Also, the original creator of FAR or PHP Archive, um, which is pretty cool. Uh, what that really means is I wrote it in PHP, and somebody way smarter wrote it in C, and it got into PHP. I'm also the lead for PHP Women in the United States, and I am at dshafik on Twitter. Every talk that I give, I always mention Prompt. Uh, Prompt is an initiative that Engine Yard started to get people talking about mental health and technology because there's a lot of issues around mental health for people in the technology industry. For those who do not know, the uh, number one uh, group of people that commit suicide are first responders. Number two are tech workers. Right, this is a big deal. Okay? So mhprompt.org, go check it out. There's some amazing talks up there. Um, and yeah, it's just important. Apologies for my accent. I have no idea where it's going to go. Um, just, just deal with it. <laughs> all right, so I, I like to talk about how I got here, how I got to writing this talk. So it all starts with profiling. Um, can anyone tell me the difference between benchmarking and profiling? All right, so um, he's put his hand up, but I don't care. I'm going to read it anyways. Um, <laughs> uh, so profiling records the relative speed of your application. It does not give you the actual performance of your application. It looks at everything that's going on and tells you the relative speed of all the different things going on. Um, and profiling, the act of profiling actually messes with the speed. Like it actually degrades your performance and can potentially make things not run the actual way they do in terms of performance. So it's kind of uh, like uh, nuclear physics or whatever it is when you, when you observe it, it you know, fucks it up. Can I swear? I can swear? Okay. Um, benchmarking will test the actual speed. So this is what your users are actually going to see. So uh, I like to do what's called the performance loop, which is this. You run a benchmark, then you profile it, you make some changes, and then you benchmark again. Right? So what happens? So you benchmark it to see what your actual performance is right now, what your users are seeing. Then you run some profiling to see why things might be slow. And then you make some changes, and hopefully they make things better. But you can't tell by profiling. You have to benchmark again to actually see what the end result is. Uh, when should you profile your code? Um, first question you need to ask is, do I have a problem? Uh, the the primary issue I see with people doing this stuff is that they assume they have a problem. They haven't actually quantified that. So what you need to do first is decide, what am I expecting from my application? Do I need 100 concurrent users with sub 10 millisecond response times? Okay, once you've decided what that metric is and what the bar is you want to meet, then you can run your benchmarks. You can actually see, do I have a problem? And if so, how big? Common causes of slowdowns, number one, databases. Doesn't matter if it's Postgres, MySQL, Oracle, Mongo, CouchDB, uh, SQL Server, it does not matter. Uh, number two is external resources, so basically anything else that's not a database, so APIs, file systems, sockets, external processes. And number three, which is what we're going to look at today, sort of, um, is bad code. Uh, I like to say the only great code is code that never has to run. And if it, if it never has to run, you should delete it. Yeah? Um, so really, there's only good code. So if you get to this point, if you've fixed your database problems, you've fixed all your I.O. problems, <laughs> You're kind of in trouble. There is no magic bullet. So let's take a look at what PHP is doing under the hood with internals 101. So the execution lifecycle of PHP, people will say PHP is not a compiled language. This is not strictly true. It is an interpreted language, but there is a compilation process that happens every single time that you run a script. And this is what it looks like. So you have your PHP script on disk. You execute it through the PHP interpreter. We pass it into a set of tokens. We compile it into opcodes, and then we run it on the Zend engine, which is a virtual machine, so VM. And then we have some sort of output, right? What I find interesting is this is the Java uh, lifecycle. So we have a Java file. We run it through the Java compiler, Java C. We pass it into a bunch of tokens. We compile it into bytecodes, same as opcodes. And then we actually save it as a binary at that point. This is where things differ. So we take the result of the compilation, and we save it. 
and then we distribute that, and then we run that binary file through the JVM instead of doing it on the fly, right? What's interesting is, is if you throw an opcode cache in, and yes, there's some logic decisions that happen here, the process actually is very similar. So we, first of all, check the opcode cache. Does it need to be cached, or is it already cached? If it's already cached, we read it from shared memory, just like we do with Java, where we've got that binary file we distribute. We don't recompile, and we execute it, right? And that's where the huge, there's actually a huge performance uh, hit from that compilation process. So that's all APC or, or Zendop cache does, is just cut it out, just save it. Uh, otherwise, we pass it, we compile it to opcodes, we save it to shared memory, and then we execute it, right? So we're gonna focus on this. And the first step is tokenizing. So this is the most over-engineered hello world that I could possibly come up with. But it's still pretty simple. Class greeting, public function say hello takes one argument, dollar two. Echo interpolated string, hello, dollar two. We then instantiate it, assigning it to dollar greeter. Dollar greeter, say hello, well. Okay, everyone's following on, this is not, not difficult. When we tokenize that, what we get out is not this, I have to do this myself, but this sort of information, right? This is what's internal in memory. Um, so it's basically a set of uh, key value pairs. So we have the token name, so this is actually a, a numeric that is represented by the constants that you see here. Uh, and then we have a value, uh, and that is the case for most tokens. So you can still read the code at this point if you kind of just read down the, the right-hand column. So PHP tag, class, greeting, open brace, public function, say hello, right? You, everyone's getting this. Um, you'll notice that like this one here doesn't have a name. So basically anywhere where it's a single character, it makes more efficient use of memory just to store the character rather than a key value pair, right? Um, so, you know, uh, braces, uh, parentheses, quotes, semicolons, um, some operators, the single, single uh, character operators, um, those will not have a name. So, something I like to bring up is the difference between interpolated and non-interpolated strings. So, most people, when they talk about performance and they talk about micro-optimizations, it's always, Double quotes versus single quotes, what's faster? And I find this stuff fascinating. So uh, we have two strings in our, in our uh, example. I'll go back to that. So we have this one here and this one here. They're both double quoted. But this is the result of the tokenization process. So the first one, because it has this uh, interpolation that's going on, gets turned into four different tokens. An open quote, the uh, static string, the scalar string, the variable, and then the closing quote, right? Whereas the other one is just this T constant encapsulated single string. Okay, so four tokens versus one. Um, so you can kind of see where this stuff starts to lead into the performance aspect of stuff, but don't get caught up in this, and you'll see that actually at the end of this is all a bunch of bollocks. So um, <laughs> there are four ways that I can think of to define a string. Echo bar, just a single double-quoted string. T constant and cap string bar. Same thing with single-quoted, exactly the same. This is uh, our uh, interpolated string. I flipped them around, so the tokens are flipped around, but the same thing, open quote, variable, caption and white space, close quote. And then there's this one, which I find oh, quite interesting, uh, where we use this curly bracket syntax to allow us to, to put in more uh, complex constructs than just uh, expressions instead of just the variable. Um, so here we have our open quote. This is the only token that is one character and has a, uh, has a name, and that's actually a, a not really a bug, they, they implemented uh, for PHP 6 that never was, um, Unicode character access, uh, and that was the token that uh, differentiated from that, and it was never pulled out in 5.3. So um, it's just kind of a holdover. So uh, open curly quote, we have our variable, which would, in a more complex uh, system, uh, where obviously we're not just doing a variable, it would be an expression. Okay, so you would have multiple tokens in there. Close uh, curly bracket, and then the rest of the string. Any questions on tokenization? I hope that's my water. Oh, I've ruined it now. Yeah. There we go. All right. That isn't my water. That's my water. <laughs> All right. No questions. Let's move on. All right. So the next part, and this is the interesting bit, my opinion, opcodes. Um, so generally, you don't talk about opcodes unless you're talking about VLD or the Vulkan logic dumper, uh, which is written by a guy called Derek Rattans. He's responsible for all the bugs in date time. Um, <laughs> uh, and it's an extension that will allow you to dump the uh, compiled opcodes. Um, so it's installed via Peckle. So Peckle install VLD beta because everything in Peckle is beta. Um, 
extension equals vld.so in your PHP INI or if you're using like Debian with the separate files, whatever. Um, and then we actually instantiate it on the command line. Uh, we don't want this running by default because obviously we don't want tons of opcodes being output for everything we run. Um, so there's two flags. There's vld.active equals one. We'll turn it on. And then there's this vld.execute, which is either one or a zero. Now, if it's a zero, it'll just run the, won't even run the file. That's the point. Um, it'll tokenize the file and, and uh, compile the file, but it will not run it. So any includes will not be run. Um, and it'll just dump for that file. Uh, you may want that because you don't want side effects because your code may actually do something if it runs, right? So uh, I typically run with, with equals zero, and if I don't see what I need, I'll run with equals one. And then the file name. So it outputs in order. The global code, so all the, uh, the opcodes for the main script, global code. Global functions and then class functions. So it's just like a huge long list of output. And what this looks like is there's a header which tells you information like what class you're in, what function you're in, what file you're in, what function you're in again, and nobody can tell me why. Um, it also tells you the number of opcodes, so you know how much output to expect. And then this line here, which I consider to be one of the most important lines of the output, which is this compiled bars line. And what this says is $2 in user land is represented by exclamation point zero in the engine. And then it outputs all of your tokens. Now, this list here took me about four days to figure out. I went to Derek. I said, what does this mean? He goes, I don't know. Um, so myself and Sarah Goldman, we went through and we figured this out. So line, the line number in your source code, there will be multiple opcodes per line, potentially. Um, so the line number, uh, the opcode number, that's just a list, uh, just a, you know, increment and counter. And then we have this wonderfully named column asterisk. So uh, this is a three-character column, and it has greater than symbols in it. Uh, if they are left aligned, it is an uh, exit point, no, entry point. And if they're right aligned, then it is an exit point. And what that means is, is every time you enter or exit a scope, it indicates that. Uh, it's actually useful for calculating things like cyclomatic complexity, uh, which was in the talk earlier, right? Um, so, no, at the meetup last night. So, uh, it's really hard to tell because they're literally three columns and they're like off by nothing. Um, so then we have the opcode name. We have uh, information about global variable fetches. So anytime you use a super global or the globals keyword, there'll be some information in there. Um, we have ext, which is a sort of extras column for different opcodes will store different things. So as I say here, if you have a jump opcode, it will tell it where to jump. The return, which is where the result of the operation is going to be stored. And then finally, the, any operands that are used. So if you've got an addition, it'll be the left and right hand uh, data that goes into that. So there are four types of variables when it comes to internals, uh, as far as uh, 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 VLD is concerned. The first one, which we already touched on, is compiled variables, or CV. They are prefixed by exclamation points. They are always numbers. All of the internals variables are always numbers, which is something you can't even do in PHP. It's great. Um, we then have temporary variables. So one's prefixed by a tilde. Uh, then we have uh, dollar variables. These are like temporary variables in that they are not um, associated with something directly in user land. Uh, however, uh, they need things like reference counting, which we'll get into later. Um, so they act like compiled variables, but they are actually temporary. Uh, and then finally, we have these colon prefixed ones, which are just for the result of class lookups. So let's take a look at what happens when we run our code. Now, I just want to take a moment and have everybody appreciate my syntax highlighting, because I have to do that by hand. <laughs> uh, now, normally, you would not get this first. You would get the result of the dollar greeter equals new greeting. Um, but because I think it makes sense, I'm going to present this first. So, uh, this is our class. Um, so when we call say hello, what happens is we receive an argument. Uh, so we have the receive opcode. And that argument is $2. So exclamation point zero, you can see the, the correlation here. Um, we then uh, create a temporary variable, which is uh, identified by the tilde here. So we're going to create tilde zero. And we're going to assign the static string hello. So the first part of that string gets assigned. Then we call add var, which basically concatenates the variable onto that temporary variable. And then we echo it. And we echo out the temporary variable. So we evaluate this expression, assign it in a temporary variable, and we echo it out. And then we return as an implicit return. And you'll notice these uh, left and right aligned uh, arrows here. When we run the main script, so just these two lines of code, we get a bit more output. And that's because it is doing a bit more stuff. So we have a NOP because it's the start of main script. It's our uh, entry point. That's all it's for. We then do a fetch class. So we look up greeting. So new greetings. So we look up the class. And it gets assigned to colon 1. I said those are those special variables. We then instantiate it. So we're going to instantiate the class that we looked up that's in colon 1, and we're going to assign it to $2. 
what I find really interesting here is then we do a third step and we call the constructor. So it's actually a separate uh, uh, step from instantiating and calling the constructor. So if you've ever used PDO and you've done a fetch class or a fetch object where it assigns the property, uh, the, the columns to properties, you'll actually notice by default, except in two minor points of 5.3 where they messed it up, um, they are assigned before the constructor runs. And that's possible because of this two-step process. It actually happens between these two opcodes right here. Um, we then assign, so our equals, we assign that uh, instantiated object to our userland variable, $greeter. We then start calling our method uh, here. So init method call, so we're gonna call say hello on the object in exclamation point zero, dollar greeting. We're gonna send in our world, and then we're gonna call it. So this is also a multi-step process. We instantiate the fact we're gonna call the method, we say here's all your arguments, now go ahead and actually run. Uh, and then finally we have an implicit one, uh, return one. All right, so um, I wanna talk about variables. Um, PHP is really shit without variables, um, so they're quite important. And they're represented by zvals, or Zen values. Um, so these are a seed data structure, uh, and they're used to store all user land data uh, in PHP, in internals. Um, and I think they're probably the most important thing in PHP. Um, and this is what they look like, at least now. It's gonna, I think it's gonna change a little bit in uh, uh, PHP 7, but they are a C struct. Um, they have four properties. Uh, the first one is uh, the value, which is a Z value value, which we'll get to. Uh, the next one is the ref count, which we'll also get to. Then we have the type. Is it an int, is it a, uh, an object, what is it? Uh, and then finally we have is ref, which is to do with the ampersand user land references. So that's a Z val, four pieces. The zval value, which I mentioned, is a C union. Now, if anyone's unfamiliar, uh, as I was, with uh, C, uh, a union is a structure that can only store one property, um, even though it has multiple defined. So in this case, we have long lval, so uh, uh, ints. We have doubles, dvals, floats. Uh, we have a struct which stores strings. And I find this really interesting. So when you do strlen on a string, it doesn't go and count the number of characters. It's already stored in this zval value. So we just look it up. Uh, we have hash tables, which are for arrays, and then we have zend object value, which represents objects. It's really important to understand that because it's written in C, it is strongly typed. So people say PHP is, is not typed, or it's loosely typed. It's not actually true under the hood, right? It has to be strongly typed. It's written in C. Um, and what happens is PHP will coerce the data when it's called into whatever type is necessary to do things like comparisons. Um, it's really important to understand PHP will never change the type of a zval, uh, which is that structure, right? It never changes, it will always create a new one instead. I have tried everything in user land to change the type, it is not possible, it will always create a new one. So there are multiple types, um, as we've kind of gone over, but uh, a few special ones. So uh, if the type in that struct is, is null, uh, it is stored nowhere, because obviously it's a null. Uh, we've already gone over longs, doubles, strings, arrays, objects. Uh, two others, booleans, uh, are stored in lval, because there is zero one in, in uh, C. And resources, if you've ever dumped a resource, it's like resource number 124, right? That 124 is also stored in the LVAL. Any questions so far? Because the next bits get complicated. Okay. Either I'm really good or you're just like, I'm just done. Last time I gave this talk was 9 a.m. after the open bar. Not a good time for it. So, um, PHP does some amazing stuff. Uh, to avoid copying values, so to avoid re uh, duplicating memory. Um, it uses something called reference counting and copy on write. Uh, what this means is, uh, is that when you assign one value to an, or one variable to another variable, it doesn't create a copy. It just says these two variables, variables both point to the same thing until you modify one or the other of those variables. Then it will create a duplicate and use up more memory. This is different from the ampersand uh, references in PHP, but it is related. So. Uh, it's much easier to show with examples. So, $a equals one will create a zval number one. It has a value of one and a ref count of one. So there is one variable that points to this zval. $b equals $a, zval number one, the ref count goes up to two, that's all that happens. So there's a lookup table somewhere and it, it knows where these things point. C equals b, ref count goes up by one again, right? It's pretty easy. Then you do $a++. Now, me, because I'm not very smart, I would have gone, okay, well, A had the zval first, that's kind of the owner of the zval, so I'm going to create a new one and assign B and C to it, that's what I would do. Um, but the people who, who wrote this are much smarter than I did, so they made the minimum amount of changes. 
They left B and C behind, pointing to Z-Val number one. They decrement the ref count. And they create Z-Val number two. And A is now pointing to this new copy. So it now has a value of two and a ref count of one. If we then unset B, you'll notice the ref count goes down by one. If we unset C, Z-Val number one is destroyed when garbage collection happens. When PHP references come into play, we then have this isRef, which was that last property in the Zval uh, struct. So A equals one, creates Zval number one. Very, same, uh, very much the same, except we now have this isRef that we're paying attention to. It equals zero, we don't have any references yet. Uh, B equals ampersand dollar A. We bump the ref count just like we did before, but now we say this is a reference. These two variables are meant to continue pointing to the same Zval. So then when you increment either A or B, it does not create a second Zval anymore. It just does it in place. So value equals two, ref count stays at two, and is ref stays at one. Okay? This is how references work. Taking that a little further, uh, A equals one, B equals A, C equals B. So that's our first example, right? Um, we then create a reference between two of, well, a new variable and one of the variables in that whole thing. And PHP, again, does the smart thing. So A equals B continue pointing to Zval number one. They have not been touched. We create a Zval number two, and C and D both point to it, and we put as ref as one. So this is now a referenced pair. Uh, and then at that point, obviously, if you change D or C, it will do it inside of that second Zval and not create a copy. Any questions on that stuff? All right. So let's look at more opcodes. So we looked at strings. Uh, what about incrementing by one? So there's more than one way to do it. I think I have four ways. So i equals one, i plus plus. Now, if you've ever looked into or heard about micro-optimizations, everyone goes, you've got to pre-increment, right? That's bullshit, but not really. So uh, we assign one to exclamation point zero, so i equals one. We then call this post inc, which stores it in a temporary variable, and then we free it because we're doing absolutely nothing within our script, okay? Um, but this temporary variable is where the performance hit comes from uh, post-incrementing versus pre-increment, okay? Uh, when we pre-increment, like so, you'll notice there's no temporary variable. It happens in place, okay? So it's, it's not necessarily a uh, CPU-type uh, performance hit, though there is one creating that memory space, I'm sure. Um, it's a memory hit. However, if you're using Zend Opcache, one of the optimizations that it does is it will look at your code, look for um, post-increments that are not assigned anywhere, and turn them into pre-increments for you. Um, so just don't bother fixing it, but this is why. Um, next one uh, is reassignment. So i equals one, i equals dollar i plus one. So we assign, we then do our addition and put it in a temporary variable. We then assign that temporary variable back to dollar i. Now you may ask why we have a temporary variable here. The reason for that is because this is an expression. And if you've ever reused variables in a long expression, that variable doesn't change even if it is modified during that expression, right? Um, so if we do $i equals $i plus 1 times $i, right? It's not, uh, this part would obviously evaluate to 2 and then times by 2, right? We'd end up with 4, right? That doesn't happen because we uh, leave $i alone and put it inside of this temporary variable till we are done with whatever that expression is. Uh, and then, of course, we assign it back over itself. And then finally, uh, we have assign add. Uh, this is my favorite, so plus equals. Um, I prefer this because I like to play with my code and do things like change the incrementing value. Um, so maybe I have a loop and I'm like, I don't need to do it every single one because I'm testing. I'll just do every tenth one, right? Um, so I like plus equals because you can change the right-hand operand. Um, but this is essentially the same as a uh, pre-increment in that it happens in place. There is no temporary variable. Um, so assign assign add will do uh, our uh, increment because we've got one on the right-hand side, and that's it. Let's go back to strings. So we've looked at this at the token level, um, but now we're going to look at it on the uh, opcode level. So echo, single quote, bar, echo, single quote, bar. Right? Easy enough. Echo, double quote, bar, echo, single quote, bar. Right? By the time we get to this point, PHP has already determined that there is no interpolation. These two things are identical. There is no performance difference. There is no difference in the opcodes, which is great because I can copy and paste this. Um, uh, simple interpolation. Uh, so our echo dollar a bar does uh, an assignment of foo, the first part here, 
then uh, does an add var. So we create a temporary variable, tilde one, uh, to hold our expression. We then uh, assign exclamation point zero, and then we add the rest of the string to that. And then finally we echo out the temporary variable, right? Um, if we look at the complex one, this was the one that created all those, those tokens, this also looks identical. And the reason for that is because it actually is, because it's just dollar $A in here. Now if you have a different expression, there's gonna be more opcodes uh, right here, where the add var is. Um, but because they are actually identical, once you take those parentheses away, you get identical output. And again, I can copy and paste. Concatenation. Dollar $A equals foo, dollar $A equals dollar $A dot bar. So we assign foo to exclamation point zero, or dollar $A. We then use the concat operator to add plus bar, temporary variable, because there's an expression. Uh, and then we assign that back to dollar A. Right? Assign concat, very similar to the um, uh, assign add, uh, it's just done in place. Um, so assign concat is technically better performant than this kind of concat. And this is my favorite part. What am I doing on time? Okay. Um, function calls. Like this is kind of the heart of running PHP, right? It doesn't matter whether they're methods or functions. We do this a lot. So uh, this is what PHP info looks like. So do f call PHP info. There's no arguments, so we just literally just call PHP info. If we look at one with arguments, uh, so BC add, um, which is from the BC math uh, extension, extension, which is for um, large integers. Uh, so BC add one and three, we have send vowels, so one for each argument, and then we call it. And you notice this little two here in the extra column, that's how many arguments are being passed in. Right. Uh, what happens if we build this ourselves? right? Uh, obviously this doesn't handle large integers, but if we did a user land implementation called add, takes two uh, variables, uh, adds them together, assigns them to C, and then returns that, right? So we'll call it add one three. So this is what it looks like. Uh, we have our entry to main script, our NOP, we have two send vowels, one and three, do f call, add, and a two. This is identical, pretty much, to this. There's no distinction at this point between user LAN and C functions. On the receiving side of that, because we've now written this, so we can actually look at those opcodes as well, we've got two receives, one for each argument. So for every send vowel, there's a, an opposing receive. We then have our addition, so uh, we add the two uh, variables, exclamation point zero, A and B, uh, and we assign them to a temporary variable, which we then assign to dollar C, and we return it. This is my favorite example, and is the end of the talk. It's like my coup de gras. So, function over or method overloading, double underscore call. Public function bar takes no arguments. Public function double underscore call takes A and B, so that will be the, the method name and the arguments that were passed in as an array. Foo equals new foo, foo bar, foo bat, which does not exist. So we'll walk through this. We're gonna go ahead and fetch the class. So new foo, assign that to colon one. We then instantiate it. We call the constructor, and we assign it back to dollar foo. We then init the method call, bar on dollar foo, and we call it. And then we init the method bat on dollar foo, and we call it. So when I looked at this, I was like, oh, this is identical for both of them. Like it doesn't understand at this point that uh, dollar bat does not exist, okay? So what's important to take away from this example is every single one of these is like a callback into the engine. And that's where all the actual logic happens in terms of does this function exist on this, this, uh, this method exist? No, it doesn't. Is there a double underscore call? Yes, there is, let's call it. Or no, there's not, let's make it a fatal error, right? All of that stuff is not shown in opcodes. This will only get you so far, and that's why I said all of this is kind of bullshit. I find it fascinating. So, any questions? Okay, we can get a mic. Uh, this gentleman here. So you mentioned that if uh, opcode is enabled, uh, those optimizations uh, do not matter. Is it correct? Um, so none of these are really optimizations. It's just kind of showing you what's going on. Um, I will not say they do not matter, um, but the most common ones, like I said, pre and post increment, it will do as a performance optimization for you. Um, honestly, everything shown here 
is never going to yield anywhere near the performance benefit of just caching the freaking output um, of the actual op, uh, compilation process. So um, use opcache. That's really what it comes down to. Thank you. Any more? I saw other hands go up. Everyone have the same question? <laughs> ah, you've got one in the front as well. Yes. Probably a boring question, but um, array map versus for each, is there any difference in that? Uh, array map versus for each. Um, in terms of the tokens and the, the opcodes that are generated, absolutely. Um, under the hood, also probably absolutely, because a for each actually um, has five function calls. It does a rewind on the very first iteration. Then it will do next, uh, valid, current, next in a loop. Right, so you've actually got multiple function calls that happen, um, whereas an array map does that all internally. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, where did Pierre go? He probably knows. So, or maybe that, he's, he's. I'll get back to you. I was just curious, given that, you know, most of these micro operations don't really matter in the day to day, are there any that you feel do matter? Are there really like, any important optimizations we should be making? Um, the only one that I like uh, to employ is echo with a comma. Um, the reason for that is uh, because uh, basically they're each individual expressions, so you don't have that uh, temporary variable for each one of them. Like it's not a concatenation, so you don't need a temporary variable. That's kind of dumb maybe, I just like it. So no, none of them really matter. Uh, this guy in the front here, ish in the front. Uh, I know none of this really matters, but um, <laughs> back when you were doing the variable assignment and you had the uh, C equals reference of D or something. Uh, okay. Uh, wow. Uh, this one. <laughs> yeah. So okay. we've got um, so we've got C equals D. The is ref flag gets changed to one. If I then go E equals D, what happens? If you then go E equals B or E D. equals D, um, basically the exact same thing that uh, happens here. Um, so is ref would stay one, ref count would go up to two, and so C, D, e and E would all they're point all a reference. To, right? Yeah, they would all point to the same Z value. Any other questions? Oh, uh, good. About my question is mainly academic. It probably makes no difference, but I was just wondering. You said single quoted versus double quoted variables. It mm -hmm. doesn't make any difference at the opcode level, but yeah. surely there's overhead in determining whether something is interpolated. Yes. In the first so place. that's where all the overhead in double versus single quoted string happens. Uh, if there is no variables, is is this does this have variables? Just that one question. Um, of course, when you cache it, opcode cache it, completely goes away. Yeah. Um, I think was it you in the blue? Oh, next to the guy in the blue. This side is winning. <laughs> what is the structure of PHP array? Pardon? What is the structure of a PHP array? I honestly don't know the answer to that. <laughs> I saw it was a hash table and I went, eh, it's too much C for me. Um, it's a Zval and a key, so it can contain any data structure inside it again. OK. Um, guys, questions, really? Any more? I, um, feedback on joined in, I really appreciate it. All of your speakers will appreciate it. Please go do that tonight if you have not done it already. Uh, it's how we get better. Oh, I thought that slide was up there. Um, <sighs> oh, shit. <laughs> there we go. All right. Um, so the slides are already up from another uh, presentation of this talk, but I will put another one up for this particular one at davyshafik.com slash slides, uh, davidendinyard.com or at dshafik on Twitter. Again, feedback, please, and thank you very much. And by, oh, who wins the book? Someone wins a book. It's none of you guys. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>